Perfect. So I see that uh, Maria Alejandra, I think she's setting up the, um, the and setting up in the financial lab. So let's give her a few minutes. Okay, so Maria Alejandra just told me that we can go ahead and start. So, so um, let me just uh, make a brief introduction in Spanish because the flyer was in Spanish. Entonces, bienvenidos. Hoy tenemos, eh, estamos reunidos en el laboratorio financiero eh, y tenemos una charla sobre el partnership que, que iniciamos eh, en este año la Facultad de Economía y en particular el área de finanzas con el Instituto CQF eh, que, digamos, nos van a contar un poco sobre el certificado eh, y sobre el, un instituto que está muy enfocado en temas de el uso de las finanzas cuantitativas en la industria. So, um, we will now change to English. Uh, so, we have uh, joining us Sonia Aurora, who works at the CQF Institute, and she will give us a brief explanation of the um, what's the CQF Institute and tell us about the partnership and all the benefits that we have as a uh, university partner. And then we'll switch over also to Pablo Castro, which is also joining us from um, the CQF Institute. And he will also tell us a bit more of the, uh, about the CQF certificate. Uh, I will be keeping, um, if some of the people joining us uh, either online or at the financial lab, I will, I, will, um, I think we can keep, uh, we can have the questions uh, for after their, their brief introduction. And then we'll, I'll, I'll just be keeping questions if some people decide to send them uh, on chat. Eh, pueden enviar sus preguntas en español y yo las puedo hacer o si quieren hacerlas directamente en, en inglés. So, uh, now I'll turn over to Somi. Thank you so much, Carlos, for having us here today. Um, as Carlos mentioned, my name is Sonia Aurora and I'm the CQF Institute Partnerships Manager. So today I'm joined by Pablo, um, my colleague who sits in New York. Um, I'm going to spend 15 minutes mm -hmm. talking about the institution, the CQF institution itself. Pablo will then take over and talk about the CQF qualification, which is part of the Institute and what it actually means to study on the CQF program, what prerequisites um, someone needs to um, study on the program. And that's something that will definitely interest some of you who are interested in a career in quant finance. Um, I actually have a presentation to share. Um, Carlos, am I able to do a, a share screen? Uh, yeah, I think we're the host, which I, I think it's Maria Alejandra, she can allow you to share the screen. Sure. That's it. So just let me know everyone. We, we're also going it. to record the session. So I think the oh, wonderful. Um, can everybody see the screen? Just a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah we, we see your screen. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So let me start with the first slide about the CQF Institute. The CQF Institute is based here in London. We are very close to the very famous London Bridge and we do have other um, global offices like I just mentioned, Pablo sits in New York um, and Singapore. Now we are the fastest growing global quant finance community 
currently we sit at over 23,000 members of the Institute and 9,000 members of the alumni and we are spread over 90 countries globally. So there's a massive, massive worldwide reach. Membership to the Institute is actually free. And so everything that I'm going to talk about in the next few slides, when you sign up for the basic membership to the CQF Institute or the resources that are on the actual website, and any events that we do are absolutely free um, to any member. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the website once I finish the, the few slides that I have. The CQF Institute itself um, is the awarding body of the Certificate in Quantitative Finance, which I just mentioned Pablo is actually going to speak about. Now, what that, what that actually means is, um, let me explain this. If you are going to actually sit for the CQF certification, it has to be done through the Institute. So it's a little different from programs such as a CFA, whereas if you start, you can study for the CFA pretty much at any institution and then just take the exam. But if you are going to sit for the actual certification, it has to be done through the Institute because ultimately we award the certification when you pass um, the course. I'm going to go through a couple of things with you, uh, just a broad range of activities and resources that you can find on the CQF website that will potentially be able to help support you with your studies and not just your studies where you are at the university right now, but post that when you're in the work environment, especially if you are in the quant finance space. And I would even say broadly the finance space, there are definitely topics that cross boundaries into general finance. You've got ESG, you've got sustainability, um, you've got so many topics in finance that are not just particular to um, quant finance. If you look at one of the things that we are world renowned for, it really is the technical talks and conferences that we have. In terms of the conferences, we have four main conferences every year. Um, this year, we had the Portfolio Management Conference, which was in February. We then had an amazing turnout um, online for the Black Shoals Conference. It was 50 years of the Black Shoals equation. We had Professor Myron Shoals come on for 40 minutes and give the keynote speech. There are two remaining conferences left for this year. The machine learning conference where we've already hit, I, I believe today the numbers were almost 1500 um, for the 21st of September. And then we have our main annual insights conference on November the 1st and 2nd. Now, if you haven't signed up for these and you have an interest in machine learning or just generally quant finance, I would highly recommend that you attend these conferences because one of the things and one of the questions we get asked at the institute all the time is you know how do you get these speakers we have nobel laureate speakers we've had um the late you know dr harry markowitz we've had professor robert engel i just mentioned professor um myron Scholz. so we do get absolutely i you know, top tier, top level speakers coming and talking about techniques in quant finance. What are the latest developments, cutting edge information in quant finance? Um, so the next two conferences are coming up. Please do sign up for those. Um, they are literally coming up one this month and then one the month after next. Now, interdispersed with that, we have global talks, career talks, and technical talks throughout the year. And you just have to keep an eye out in your monthly newsletters. I'll mention that a little bit later um, in terms of what is happening at the Institute. And don't worry, in case you miss anything, all these events are recorded. They will be online for a period of, I believe, three months or until the next conference is, um, you know, is actually out there um, and recorded. Now, all the events are CPD certified. So if you are taking any other professional qualifications, then it will help to, you know, for you to gain those credits. So those are the technical talks and conferences. And I will go over a little bit. And I'll just show you where those you can find those on the actual website. In terms of networking, all our online events have um, 
all the all the online events have networking capability post and prior to the event itself. One of the things that has been really exciting this year with the sort of, you know, with with the, I guess, slightly more relaxation towards COVID and the boundaries and all, you know, all the checks and balances have somewhat dropped in relation um, to the pandemic. We decided to have our society meetings live and in person for the first time in many, many years. And it's been an exciting journey. We've had um, we've had them in a couple of regions in um, in India, um, New York, Toronto, Singapore. And I believe we do have one coming in the Latin American region. They are highly recommended to attend those if you do get the chance. Now, I appreciate the fact that London and, you know, London and New York, okay, those are the hubs of quant finance. So we picked those areas. But I promise you that we will be having some in your region um, in the next, you know, definitely in the next year. And that's a really great opportunity for you to go and listen to speakers in quant finance and then also network with professionals in the industry. Now, quite often, more than not, we do get CQF alumni that attend these sessions and you have, you know, you have access to all this wealth of information where you can just go and talk about anything that interests you in quant finance. It's a little different to other organizations. If you look at the CFA, you have to be a CFA charter holder or at least be studying for the CFA to even access um, their live events. And for the CQF Institute, as long as you're an Institute member, you can sign up for any event, whether it's a live one or whether it's online, there's no bars to um, the events that you can attend. Um, and it's all free as well. So just keep an eye out, I would suggest for the monthly newsletters that will come from your professors, um, it will have all the latest and greatest um, information of what is happening at the Institute. So once those society meetings come in your area, please do go and attend that. And I think Carlos, you and I have discussed it, that we would like to do some collaboration at the university and hold something at in your area um, with the CQF Institute. We are exploring that in the upcoming months um, for sure. So just keep an eye out on your monthly newsletter for what's happening um, in your area and in your region. Mm -hmm. The world is also a very small place. If you are traveling and there happens to be a CQF event, just please do go and attend it. We do get a lot of students attend those meetings. I was at the the last event um, in London and it was at Barclays Bank. And we had students come from all over the UK to attend that event. So I appreciate that right now there may not be, you know, there may not be an event in your area, but it will be coming, I can assure you. Um, in terms of careers advice, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention here. Now, the first is the careers event. We have three to four careers events a year because obviously we have a very busy event schedule. So we try to fit in a minimum of three careers events. The first one we had in February, just to give you an idea of the type of careers events we have, the first one was all about the future quantitative skills that you would need if you want to explore a career in quant finance. And that session was amazing. We had 300 people attend that, it just did that one, that 45 minute session, um, which we had the directors from Bloomberg, um, Deloitte and Millennium really go into an in-depth panel discussion of, okay, you know, what skills does one need in the next five years if you are going to upskill in the in the world of quant finance? Um, we just finished a session on the quantitative uh, finance resume. He was a recruiter that was, a, that he partners with the CQF Institute. Um, and again, it was a great session for you to just get some career development career professional upskilling um, that we do. The next one will be, I believe, in November, um, and we're just planning that. But that's a really great series that we do. It's called A Day in the Life of. So it could be a day in the life of a quantitative developer, a quantitative researcher. And that person who's usually a CQF, a senior CQF alumni member, 
we'll just go through what their day looks like, what the qualifications you need for that particular role. Um, and that's usually an hour long session. So again, keep an eye out for that. That will come in November. It's a great session. Um, Following that, we have a recruitment email and that comes out monthly from the Institute. I'm sure many of you will be looking for jobs after your time at your school and you, you, know, you want to enter the workforce. We have over, I would say over 200, sometimes 250 jobs in the, in the space of quant finance. And some of those jobs are particular and unique to the CQF Institute. So they are not going to be publicized everywhere. We have great jobs from the Soros Fund, um, from Shell, and these are sometimes unique to the Institute, so you won't see anywhere else. In terms of the careers articles and guide, um, again, highly recommend you read the careers guide. It's an annual report or document that is released by the Institute and it has all the information that you would need for a career in quant finance. It goes through salary expectations of what certain career verticals are in quant finance within your region. So you know that, hey, if I want to be a quantitative research, researcher in Colombia, what kind of salary can I expect in the Latin American region for that? So a great document that you can just take your time and read that. This to me is a really important slide. It just shows anybody that we are working with, these are the kind of companies on a monthly basis I have interaction with, whether it's for recruitment or whether it's for speaking opportunity, sponsorships. This is literally just a handful of the type of companies we work with. Um, EY, we have a monthly requisition out for jobs in the quant finance space. Um, our own Fitch Ratings Group as well, um, and Deutsche Bank. Um, a lot of C senior CQF alumni at these um, companies, but great, great working partners for the Institute itself. In terms of thought leadership, there is a ton of material that you can go through that may help your research projects that can just help you to understand the quantitative finance world a little bit better. We have, <coughs> excuse me, we have um, reports, we have technical articles, we have a monthly blog, you know, we have monthly blog pieces, several of them, and we have a monthly podcast. These will all help you to stay up to date in the new developments that are going on in the quant finance world not only while you're studying, but if you choose to then explore a career in finance in general, you know, it, it really is a wealth of information out there to so just go sometime, go and explore that when you have some time um, to go through that. In terms of workshops, your university has now partnered officially with the CQF Institute, which means that in the upcoming months, we will be doing workshops in Things such as career paths in quant finance, key concepts in um, quant finance, an introduction to machine learning, AI, and Python. So those are some workshops that are coming. And again, I keep mentioning this um, monthly newsletter, but that is something that the university will share with you on a monthly basis that will just keep you up to date and just give you a snapshot of what is happening um, at the institution. I'm going to stop um, sharing there and then I'm going to hand over to Pablo. Before I do that, I did want to show you very briefly the CQF Institute website. This is what it looks like and you can all go there. It's cqfinstitute.org. Um, for the events, all the events are there and they're all listed. You can now, Today, if something interests you about what I'm saying or what Pablo is saying, you're hey, I want to learn more about the CQF um, qualification. Now, Pablo is going to give you an overview of the qualification, but we have a CQF info session, which will go into much more detail. Um, and I believe it's tomorrow. 
Um, so if you look on there straight away, you can see there's an, a CQF info session. So please don't hesitate to attend that very detailed one hour session if you want to learn more about the actual qualification itself. So if you go to the events page, everything is there. But this is where you're going to sign up for your membership. You'll just go to the membership page and you will sign up for the basic membership here. Select that. And then once you do that, you'll get your uh, membership email and everything that I've spoken about in the last 10 minutes, you will have all of that access for free, whether it's a local society event that's coming in your area, whether it's an online event, whether it's a blog piece, all of that will come completely free to you um, as a institute member. I'm going to stop sharing there. Now, Pablo, can I hand over to you to actually talk about the certification? Sure. If you can, can you bring up the the uh, PowerPoint again and then you just move yeah. forward as I, as I ask? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So I want to I want to thank everybody again for giving us the opportunity to speak to you about the CQF Institute and the uh, CQF program. So as Sonia mentioned before, the uh, the institute itself is the largest online community uh, for quantitative finance. It's really the place to go if you want to be uh, uh, know what's happening in quant finance, the uh, the trends in quant finance, and and part of that is the educational aspect. You know, people want to move into quant finance as a career, they have to have the skills. They have to have the abilities to uh, implement the models that are very uh, much in demand in the industry. And that's where the uh, certificate in quantitative finance or CQF uh, comes up. Um, as you see here, it is the largest professional qualification program in quant finance. Uh, it's 20 years, so 2003. So it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, I wanna stress that it is a master's level quant finance education. Um, and the reason why I bring it up is because uh, it really is an alternative to a master's in financial engineering. So if you want to see, uh, be able to compare um, how it is in the university level, it really is comparable to a master's in financial engineering. The differences are, as I put there, focuses on cutting edge practical quant finance and machine learning skills. Now, I will not go into detail on everything. Uh, we do have a the information session that Sonia mentioned on Thursday, August 17th. So if you would like to learn a little bit more uh, detail about the program, I highly recommend that you go onto the uh, uh, CQF website and uh, and register, and, and it's free. Um, it's delivered by a world-renowned faculty of practitioners. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Paul Wilmot, but he is the founder of the program. To give you a little uh, story, Dr. Paul Wilmot uh, founded the uh, Master's of Financial Engineering program at Oxford um, early in the 1990s. Uh, he decided to form the CQF because he found out that he could actually give uh, similar or uh, upgraded education on a part-time online basis. Uh, and that's where the CQF came about. Uh, we have over 9,000 delegates in over 90 countries. Uh, just gonna, um, Latin America is one of our fastest growing regions, just so you know. Um, so we're very proud of that. Um, but it is a global certification, well-renowned uh, and accepted. Uh, the program can be completed part-time, live, and online. So it uh, it is designed for those who are working in the financial sector. You don't have to take time away from your job. You could do it part-time. You could do it all online. And again, get that master's level uh, education uh, that that's available. Uh, we do provide support, one-on-one uh, -on -one support and others throughout the program for those who need help with the uh, with the curriculum or questions about, you know, uh, career guidance and things like that sort. That is available, again, to the Institute, which is a part of, which the CQF is part of. And we have lots of hundreds and hundreds of companies who are now uh, sending some of their people uh, to the CQF so that they could upscale their education on the program. Uh, Sonia, if you want to move forward to the next slide, please. Awesome. So uh, again, I'm not going to go into detail detail here, but I do want to talk about you know how the program is structured. Uh, I think it's a good uh, way to have an understanding of you know what is offered on the CQF. And the best way to understand the CQF is three phases or three parts. 
So there's a preparation phase, a qualification phase, and a lifelong learning phase. Um, the preparation is to get you ready for the CQF, in particular in the math, your Python programming. If you don't have a background in finance, we will teach you that so you can do the CQF. The CQF qualification is the actual program. It is a six month program. Um, there are six modules or courses in the program. Uh, there are advanced electives, there's three exams, and there's also a final project. Um, the lifelong learning is for those who complete the CQF program. It is, uh, it is continuing education. Um, quant finance always evolves, is always changing. So we are there to provide them with the access to all the quant finance training that they will need throughout their career. Uh, and I'll talk about that in more detail in the future slides. Sonia, please. Oh, okay. So we're just talking about the modules. Okay. So, so, so I mentioned before the qualification itself is based on um, six modules, uh, electives, and uh, and exams, and um, and final project. So just to go into again basic module one before we start, um, the program itself is taught in six months. So each module is about a month long. Okay. So the program itself um, is there designed to, again, to work with people part-time. So module one, building blocks of quantitative finance is the math, that the foundational math that you're gonna need throughout the program. So again, quantitative finance, for those who are not familiar, is using uh, math, mathematics, to be able to implement um, um, financial models uh, for pricing for different types of assets. So that's what it's designed for. So module one, the building blocks of quant finance is you'll learn the math um, that you will need throughout the program. Module two, quantitative risk and return, it's portfolio management. How do you manage um, losses and gains on a portfolio of assets? It could be equities, fixed income, currencies, commodities, whatever. Uh, this is where you will learn models that you will need to know to be able to you know, manage the risk of um, these type of assets on a, on a portfolio. Module three, equities and currencies. We're gonna focus now on stocks, equities, uh, stock derivatives like options, for example, and FX uh, derivatives as well, the currencies. So you'll learn things like the Black-Scholes model, which is a very uh, popular model. In fact, um, one of our last talks, um, the Black-Scholes uh, uh, creator, um, Scholes, <laughs> the Scholes, he actually had a discussion uh, about the evolution of the Black Scholes model and how has that impacted the financial industry. So you'll learn all about that on the program. And there are two exams, by the way, there's an exam after module two and exam after module three. Let me stop a little bit, talk about the exams. So the exams are not um, exams where you sit down, take questions and answer. You cannot learn quant finance on those type of exams. The only way you can learn quant finance is to actually learn about the models, implement the models, when to use the models and so on. So the exams are really projects. Uh, we will send you um, some questions. You have to solve it. You have to find out, know what models to use, when to use it. And that's, that's what the exam is. And you get two weeks to do it. So it's a very rigorous, very, um, you know, a thorough program. And so it's there designed for you to really, once you, if you pass it, that means you know how to use the, uh, the, the models learned in those, in those modules. Can you go to next slide, please? Okay, so I mentioned six modules. So now we're at modules four, five, and six. Uh, Sonia mentioned mach those machine learning AI um, um, conferences and seminars. Um, this is where we focus on that on the program. Now, just to give you a little background, the program is the syllabus is updated constantly because quant finance is updated constantly. Um, module four and five, which are the data science and machine learning portion of the program, did not even exist three or four years ago. But because quants now have to be programmers, uh, you're working with large amounts of data, uh, you need to be able to be able to program that data into uh, uh, some sort of programming language like Python, R, SQL, C++, and so on. And so that's why any quant pro program like the CQF, it is required and imperative that we 
do contain uh, programming um, in, in part of the program. So module four, data science and machine learning one is the introduction to, uh, to programming, to the data science. And we teach in Python, by the way. We teach in Python. Um, so if that's why we have a Python primer. So those who come to the program who do not have a Python background, we will teach you the Python that you need uh, to be able to be successful on the program if needed. So data science and machine learning one, again, uh, I'm not going to detail here, but you'll learn things like uh, um, uh, mathematical modeling, uh, principal component analysis, supervised learning techniques. Again, it's the intro to the, um, to the machine learning that is used in the industry. Uh, module five, we get into more detail, more advanced machine learning. Uh, here you learn things like natural language processing, artificial neural network, um, uh, AI-based algo trading strategies. Again, these are some of the topics that are covered in uh, our conferences. You will actually learn about that um, on the uh, CQF program and it's like module five. Module six, fixed income and credit. Uh, again, we'll, we're gonna talk about fixed income topics. You'll learn things like um, uh, X valuation assessment, uh, CDS pricing, CDO pricing, probability methods. Again, and after that, you have a final project. And the final project is is basically where you will learn how to apply everything um, into uh, the program. And it takes about six to eight weeks and is really uh, similar to a master's thesis. You have to have a table of contents. It could be 20, 30, 40, 50 pages long. And you have to uh, solve a, a very complex problem uh, using all of the uh, techniques and training, uh, the training that you uh, obtain throughout the CQF program. Um, Sonia, can you continue, please? All right. So I mentioned the advanced, uh, the uh, the final project. So the final project is um, composed of um, advanced electives and also the core CQF program. So you will have, each student will have the opportunity to specialize in this particular quant finance. So you'll see here uh, topics from advanced ensemble modeling, portfolio management, machine learning, um, algorithmic trading one and two, very popular for traders who go to the program, uh, C++, uh, energy trading and FX trading are the newest additions to the program. Again, we always upgrading the, uh, the curriculum to reflect what the industry needs. And again, that's something uh, uh, that's part and parcel of the Institute. The Institute will talk about you know, what the trends are in the industry, what are the topics that are people most concerned with. We will bring in the speakers that are the top people in that field. The CQF program is here. We're here to train and, and our pe the people to be able to uh, incorporate those techniques and those, um, those skills into either new careers or into their existing careers if they're already quants. Um, so you see that the FX training and hedging, quantum computing. And again, this is where the final project is. It's like a master's thesis. You pick two of those, um, you will get a, a, a problem. You have to solve the problem using quant finance techniques and programming. And then after eight weeks or so, you know, we grade you. And if you pass, you get the certification. And now you're really uh, well ahead of most people in the quant finance space. Uh, Sonia? Okay, so I guess I'll leave it up to, to you, Sonia. Thanks, Pablo. I think we just went over this because I had just gone through the um, actual website um, of how to register for the free membership to the Institute. And like I had continuously mentioned throughout the presentation about the monthly newsletter, which you will receive from um, Professor Carlos and, and your and his team there, they will send this out. So just keep an eye out for it. And, you know, you'll get to know, you know, quickly what's happening at the Institute. So I don't have anything to really add um, add there. Um, yes, uh, just to complement uh, what just Sonia mentioned. Um, so so going forward, what, what we'll do is we'll set up a web page which will include this recording as we have done with the other type of uh, uh, partnerships that we have with other type of uh, certificates like the CFA. So we'll build a web page where students will able be able to uh, look at this information at, at any point at any point in time, and we will also um, use the financial lab as a way to distribute the the newsletter. 
right? So this would be our, our way to keep the students up to date to the recent developments in the CQF Institute. Um, I don't know if we, ca we can open the floor for some questions. Uh, I don't know if we have some questions from our audience. Um, I don't see any hands up. I, I do, do have kind of a question in, in specific in terms of what are the expectations uh, of the CQF Institute in, in terms of Latin America? So what, what are you working on? So, so my feeling is that um, quantitative finance is, is we, and we're actually very proud because we, we were some of the first people who, start, who had a master in quantitative finance uh, almost, uh, that this started like in 2013. And uh, although capital markets in Latin America are not as huge as in the US uh, or in the UK, there's still a, a big room to do quantity finance, especially in risk management, both at the banks, at the pension funds, which is still a very big industry in Latin America. So what are your thoughts? Or we're mentioning that this is one of the biggest growing regions in terms of the demand for the certificate. So what are your thoughts and your plans uh, co going forward for Latin America? Um, if I may answer that, Sonia. Um, so I, I could tell you from experience that Latin America countries like Brazil, um, Chile, Peru, are really taken to the CQF program um, at, at the individual and also at the corporate level. And the reason being is that they've um, a lot of the, uh, the industry, the infrastructure itself has migrated to have a need or more of a need for quantitative finance uh, skills. So uh, I, I think that's the trend is going to continue. Uh, Colombia has been pretty uh, uh, active in the CQF the last uh, semester as well. So I think the trend's going to continue um, only upward in Latin America because the need for uh, quantitative finance professionals is just is just more. And I, I also uh, compliments to you having the master's uh, program there. Um, there isn't your as you know you're probably not you're probably an exception for most of the part in some of the countries because um, there there is as the people that I've spoken to have always said look you know the uh, the programs that are available are either not available or they're just not up to par right now to what what's needed and that's where the CQF fills in that gap because it is a master's a level and I and I want I want to stress this again because I've had this conversation with people who've had a master's of financial engineering in countries like the United States, uh, Canada, and other places, and they say the CQF is actually more effective um, because it actually goes over the uh, the topics that are actually being used in the industry. The faculty that we have, and I welcome everybody to go to cqf.com, look at the faculty. Uh, these are not professors like they work in universities. These are actual practitioners. They actually use these quant techniques at their own, you know, at their own firms. So we're, we're, we are actually going through, this, through the program and teaching and training our people on what the industry needs. And that's why we have to always update the program, incorporate more machine learning, more AI, things of that sort, because that's what the industry is, is needing right now. And being able to have that um, um, available for Latin America is a great thing because uh, everybody in the world does the same CQF program. There is no separate CQF for Latin America, for Europe, for Asia. Everybody does the same thing. So once you go to the CQF, you are doing the same type of training that someone in Singapore, someone in London, someone in United States, someone, you know, whatever. You are doing the same type of training as everybody else. So when you get the CQF designation, you should be proud because you have been, you have done everything that every, everybody else in the world has done. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, so, so I we have an, uh, some follow up questions from the from the audience, and one of these, I think, uh, what do you have any admission requirements or any because as you mentioned, if this is equivalent to a master's program, what are, could you give us a little bit of more information about admission requirements? Sure, certainly. So. Uh, the CQF program, we do have a vetting process. So those who are interested in the program, uh, go to cqf.com and submit your application. Um, the only uh, you do, the, what you should have is at least a very strong background in mathematics, actually, obviously calculus, linear algebra, stochastics, some statistics, and some programming will help as well. 
Um, we usually do not accept uh, people who are undergrads. It's very rare because you do have to have that strong background in the mathematics to do that. It's usually for those who are at least in the master's level or already working in the field in finance. But we do have a very uh, a vetting process. If you go to CQF.com, you see the application there, the questions they ask. Um, not everybody is accepted to the program. It's very, very clear on that. Um, we have a 90, 95% graduation rate. And the reason being because the those we do accept, we want to be we feel that they can actually deal with the work. And if they have issues, we accept them. They have issues. That's what the primers are for. The primers are there to get them um, up to speed on the mathematics, the the programming. We have tutors. Uh, we give you up to three years to do the program. So take your time if you need to um, to absorb the material. Uh, and we'll, we're there to help you throughout the entire process to make sure you you complete the CQF program. Okay, thanks. I, I have a sec there's a second question regarding the certification exams, but but it's probably I think that the it's not it's important not to get confused that uh, I think the, the CQF exams are very different than from like CFA type exams. You no, know? so could you, you maybe um, like uh, make that clear like this difference? Sure. Uh, and I mentioned on the presentation because I knew it was going to come up. Um, the um, the uh, you cannot learn uh, quant finance, quantitative finance on a CFA type exam. Um, give you an example. Let's say you're learning how to you know fix a car, fix a car engine. You can't learn that on the manual. You have to get your hands dirty, get you know oil on your hands, be able to you know use the wrench, and you actually have to know how to fix the car. That's what the CQF is. That's what the quant finance is. You have to know what models to use, how to use them. How to and also be able to uh, you know adapt to the type of questions you have. So we're, that's what the program is. When I say practical applications of quant finance, is because we're going to teach you how to use the the models that are used in the industry, not just theoretical. What are used in the industry? What these companies need um, um, to, for on their day to day, and you have to show us um, on an exam. It's really a project that you know how to use it. So that's all we give. Uh, as there are three exams. Um, and a final project. Each exam takes two weeks to do. So once you complete a, a module, let's say module two, the portfolio management one, once it's over, once that ends, the instructor's gonna say, okay, look, the exam's available on a student website or portal. You got two weeks to complete it. And the student has two weeks to understand what the question is, what models to use, and then be able to uh, prove throughout the, what the, the the calculation, the equation, and do it all there and show it to the professor. And that's because you can't, again, you cannot learn quant finance in a, in a regular exam, CFA exam. It, it's really to compare the CQF to the CFA is, it's not the same thing. They're both, you know, they're both type certification, but the CQF is way more technical, it's way more involved, way more thorough. And again, it is a master's uh, level uh, training. So I, I wanna stress that. And we have a couple of questions from undergraduate students, and one mm -hmm. of them asks, um, how can he, like they could er, start, what would be your suggestions to start preparing if uh, they want to uh, eventually do go through the CQF program? Great question, great question. So the two things, um, to keep it simple, two things they have to do. First, they have to get the mathematics. So that means uh, do your calculus, do your linear algebra, do all that, some statistics, have a great handle on that because you cannot do anything in quant finance without having, uh, being a, a, a master in, in those fields. Second, not as important, but I think it's it's uh, more essential, learn a programming language. Try to learn Python. Try to learn Python. If you can't, learn C++, uh, but definitely try to get a handle on a programming language. Uh, and this third thing as well, which, you know, understand the markets, you know, read up on finance, read up on, you know, the the, the markets, the equity markets, derivatives, the uh, fixed income markets, the commodity markets. We just released a new elective in energy trading, okay? Uh, reason being that some of the, um, our, co our corporate um, uh, spon uh, corporate uh, clients, they, they need to have a more specific, uh, uh, you know, program set up for their people, energy traders. And that's what the CQF is, uh, allowing them to do that. So those are the three things I would I would say. Math, understand your math, get some programming, and also understand the financial markets uh, clearly as well. 
Okay, thanks. So we, there's another question regarding whether it's if it's possible to take some of the courses uh, outside of the program or like modules, like independent modules, or um, if, if they're asking if this is possible. Yeah, that, uh, we the CQF program is one program. There's no a la carte way to do it. Um, the only other thing you could do is, and this is something that it's, you know, not necessarily uh, um, suggested, but if you want to do it, um, you could always just uh, pay a deposit and do the primers uh, if you need to. Now, the primers, again, you have to be accepted to the program first. So you have to have that background that I mentioned before, the math, the programming. So before you even do that, you get to do the primers. If you need to, if you want to get ready for the primers, then I would, you know, just read up on quant finance, you know, attend the CQF Institute. Um, this, is the, this is where the Institute actually comes into play and helps you out. The Institute is open to everybody. So you don't have to be a, a specific uh, quant person or work in the field. You sign up for the Institute, um, go to the, uh, to the conferences. You're going to learn a lot from there. And also everything is recorded on the Institute website. So if you want to, you know, go in, uh, look at a recording of something where we cover Black Scholes or something AI or something of that sort, you're more than welcome to do so. And that will get you also ready, help you get you ready for a program like the CQF. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. And there's a student that mentions whether for the CQF program, is there any benef additional benefits from being a part of a partnership university? The benefit, the CQF program is a long-term uh, deal, I guess I would say, if you want to look at it that way, um, the institute is probably the best way right now for those in 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 universities to really get acclimated and introduced to quant finance, because quant finance is it's it's just no way to put it. It's it's pretty hard. You have to have the math background, you have to have the programming background to be able to really take advantage of it. So my suggestion is, you know, just go to the institute events, uh, sign up for it. It's great that it's free, just so you know, it's free. Uh, get acclimated into quant finance, pick up some books. Um, you know, there's a um, books by uh, uh, a lot of book, great books you can you can look at as well and learn about, about quant finance, but really just use the Institute as a resource to really uh, uh, get acclimated to all the topics that are covered. And one thing about uh, the Institute as well is that I mentioned that the that CQF updates the curriculum. A lot of those topics come from the Institute. Like, you know, the Institute does give us ideas. I think we meet uh, every three months or so to see what it is that we can add onto the program or we have to take away, again, based on what is relevant in the industry. We are there for those who want to be able to, you know, use those, those skills right away. And that's why we have people, corporate sponsors as well, who send their people because while they're learning the CQF, whatever they learn on the program, they can use right away at their jobs. So that's what is another great resource. But for now, I think the Institute is a great vehicle um, for, for uh, university students to really uh, acclimate it into the quant finance. And then afterwards, if you want to do CQF, you know, you graduate, you, you're working in finance, then the CQF, it could be a great, a great uh, option for you at that moment. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I, I'm actually, it's very good. Our undergraduate program, we have a very, very strong background in math. So, mm -hmm. and also in programming. So I think our students have already a good head start on the kind of requirements that, uh, that they would need to, to, make, to do anything in financial engineering or the CQF program. So, um, so welcome to Universidad del Rosario. Uh, uh, we we'll give a strong welcome to the CQF Institute. And please think of, uh, of us as a very active partner in, in developing these plans for Latin America. I mean, when I was registering for, for the membership, I saw that there's not yet a chapter in Bogota, but I know a couple of um, people in the industry that have been through the CQF Institute. So. So maybe it's a good opportunity to to try to start developing these these um, uh, maybe on site events, and we can for sure really help you host it in 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 the university. Yeah, and one thing you could do as well, if you go to cqf.com, look at the alumni section. 
Okay. You look at the alumni section, you'll see it's, the, it's uh, sorted by country and look at, um, obviously you'll see Brazil, largest economy in Latin America's be a lot, but uh, we do, we, last, uh, uh, the June um, semester, which is, was started last, mo last month, we do have uh, a lot more Colombian uh, students there than before. And again, I, I think it's because of the fact that this is more of a need for this type of skill set in, um, in in your country, so I would I would just go to the alumni section on the website, uh, take a look there. You could also go to LinkedIn, and look type CQF and look under Columbia. Uh, everybody who does a CQF program are very proud to put the CQF title on the LinkedIn profile. Again, just like a CFA, CAGS, all the others, because of the amount of work required to get the CQF program. It is something to be very proud of. It is an accomplishment. Um, so I would go to LinkedIn, CQF, Colombia, and you see all those um, alumni there. And they're more than, my experience with them is that they're more than happy to, you know, receive um, messages from people who want to learn about the CQF program. They are bet most um, best advocates, the, our alumni. So want to talk to them, I, I don't think it would be a problem for them. Okay, so thank you very much for all of for our attendance and a very mm -hmm. special thanks to Aurora, to Sonia and Pablo mm -hmm. and thank Maria you. Alejandra too, for organizing all of this. And uh, just keep in mind that, that uh, you're very welcome and we're very interested in these type of partnerships from the point of view of uh, of the Faculty of Economics and in general, the University of uh, Universidad de Rosario. Awesome, awesome. Sure, thank you very uh, much. Sure. And I must thank say something in so Spanish. Muchas uh, gracias <laughs> para ustedes invitarnos a esta sesión. Ojalá que usted, ustedes contaron eso informativo. Y si hay preguntas por, sobre el CQF, por favor, de enviar mensaje a mí o a Sonia. Y gracias por, por su tiempo. Excelente. Bueno. Ok, ok. Buen día. Muchas gracias. Día. Thank, Muchas gracias. You. thank you so Bye. much. Adiós. Bye. 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 Bye.